Hey, welcome back to the channel. Good to see you again. Hope you're all well. Thanks for joining. Uh, today on the bench, I have a mission turntable. This was a, from a local client. Uh, he approached me and uh, he asked if I could fix this up for him. And this is, uh, yeah, I don't know what's going on here, but somebody did some uh, creative wiring on the tone arm of this turntable and we need it fixed. It doesn't, uh, it's not working properly as far as I know. I didn't test it yet, but uh, I agreed I'd fix it for him. So let's get to it. Now, this is a Mission 775 SM, the base or the plinth or whatever they call it. 774, it says 775 here and 774 here. So I don't know what the difference is. Maybe it's the same thing, I don't know. I don't, maybe somebody replaced this tone arm on this, on this base. That's another uh, theory I have, but the, uh, let me show you what's going on with the wiring itself. Okay, you can see it comes out this uh, little rubber tube here. I don't know if that's legit or what. Like I said, I know nothing about these mission turntables. So it comes out the side and it goes around the back and it goes into the base here. Now, I don't think that's right because something's gonna get snagged on that and eventually that's gonna get ripped apart or damaged or something. So he did provide me with some documentation and this is what it shows in the manual. So it shows the, the wires coming out the back of the tube, not the side. And then it just goes down to the bottom of the base here. Okay, so from what I can see, there is a hole in the back end of the tube here, the tone arm, and the wires could come out there, but there is no place down here for the wires to re-enter into the base. As far as I can see, there is nothing. This doesn't really match the photograph or the, the drawing anyway. It's a uh, kind of, if you look, this piece here, is missing from here. So I don't know where the wires that go in. There's probably room for it, but back here is not good. This isn't good because this will uh, uh, disrupt your anti-skating if you get too much pull on the wire in one direction or another when the, when the arm swings. Yeah, we want to centralize the pivot point for the wire. If you have it way off to the outside, it's going to cause uh, different forces. But if you centralize it to the pivot point, then it, that minimizes those uh, different torques that will happen on from the wires. So yeah, this is, uh, well, that's loose too, counterweight. I don't know anything about these mission turntables. I don't know if this arm has been replaced. Uh, let me have a good look at this uh, this uh, assembly here and see if I can find out if they sneak the wires down the middle or if they go down along the side. So here's a close up of the toner or the, the cartridge assembly and the wiring for it. Comes out the uh, tube and goes straight down. We got silk covered wires. And uh, the owner of this turntable asked if I could replace the wiring. Um, Yes, I probably could, but I don't know where I would ever get these silk covered wires to do the proper, uh, you know, but this looks a little messed up here. He says also there is a problem with one of the channels has a hum, hum problem. So I'm guessing we have a break in one of these wires um, and maybe there's a ground missing. I don't know. Uh, typically, they run a fifth wire up to the tone arm to ground the tone arm assembly so that it doesn't pick up any stray, you know, any stray hum. So what we got here for cartridge, we've got a orthophon. Is that how you pronounce it? Orthophon or orthophon? And it's got a cover on it, so it's gonna be safe. I don't wanna damage anything there. Looks like a fairly good cartridge. I know nothing about. 
So somebody's had this apart because the screws are pretty much stripped out. They're not really holding much. They're going into a wood or fiberboard base. So I want to pull this out and see what's behind this plate. And then we can get a better look at what's going on back here. Okay. Okay, here's the wiring for the output. And yeah, it looks pretty frail. Somebody was using blue tape, electrical tape. Looks like all the connections are intact. Just we might have a short here with the... Uh, let me check with my ohmmeter. Let's see what we got for resistance between the two coils. So on the right channel. Open circuit. Open circuit. Yeah, we got some fixing up to do. I think what the best thing to do here is just rip out all the old wiring and start fresh. And I could probably reuse this wire um, as long as it has continuity, it's not damaged. I'll uh, cut the splice open, see what's going on here. If it is a splice, I can re-splice it and make it a lot better, a lot compact, more compact than this. And uh, don't know what that hole is for. Doesn't really matter. I think probably the best solution for this is have the wire come out the back of the tube instead of the side. I don't know if there's any advantage to having it come out the side here. And then running it down alongside the uh, the shaft here, the tone arm, between these three jaws and then out to the back and uh, we'll terminate this properly. We'll get uh, We'll get something happening here. What I'm going to do, uh, probably what I'll do next is I'll test each of these four lines to see if we have continuity between the cartridge and the back panel here. And uh, I don't need to do that on camera. Uh, maybe I could, I guess. Okay. Let's check for continuity here. This one's the white wire. White. Yeah, nothing. Oh. Maybe we do have something on white. Okay. Green. Green way to working. Red. Let's see red here. Where is red? Red's working. Blue. Got nothing on blue. One hundred and ten ohms on blue. So, does this mean that I have continuity on this one? Got one point one k there. And nothing on this one. Oh, we got one point one k. It's it's intermittent. So I think we have a problem here on this, in this wiring. We need to clean this up. But we also need to establish a safe route for these wires. And I'm thinking, uh, I don't know what I'm thinking here. I'm thinking, I'd like to see them come out the back end like it's supposed to. Or you know what? This is this book tells it all. The wire comes out the side of the tone arm and then spins around to the back. There is a connector there. Shows it here coming out from the it looks like the back of the tube, but it's actually out the side coming around and going to the bottom. This connector here is this connector. 
but whatever this connected to has been removed and changed. I don't know if this is, this connector here is um, ideal for this part. If I screw this up, there's a, a slot for this that it fits in. And then that would attach the um, two RCA outputs. And that would provide a spot for us to plug the tone arm into from above. If we did that. But the wire shouldn't be going into this hole. The wire should be going down the center here somehow. So let me think about this for a while and see what I can do. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I disconnected these wires from the RCA plugs and I got a comment on these wires. They did not absorb solder. Like there are not, you probably can't see that on the camera, but I'll show you. It's like they weren't tinned at all or maybe they weren't fluxed properly and it didn't absorb the uh, the solder the solder didn't stick so i'm wondering if if the connection was bad at the at the solder joints but what i'm going to do now that i got this disconnected i'm just going to pull these wires out and we are going to remove the tone arm from the pivot castings so just loosen this screw this is a hex head screw and i'm just going to loosen it off and remove the tone arm completely. And then I can take this out and work on it separately. So like I was trying to explain before, I think this actually goes underneath here in this slot and then there's provision for it to get screwed up in there. Um, this connects to the RCA jacks, obviously. And that allows for this piece uh, to be a socketed device which you can plug in here and that's how you connect it but there's a problem I want to feed the wire down the middle and I don't want to feed the wire down here I want to feed it down from below so I think we might just do away with all this okay now that I got it removed I have a good look at it I think yeah, look at open to open this up and yeah it was spliced. Uh, I'm gonna have to redo some of this. So I think I can reuse the wiring. The wiring's okay. I don't think it's damaged beyond reuse. We just patch it up here and there and we can make this all work again. I'll clean this up so it doesn't look so ratty. Yeah, because this is gonna be in full view. I'll try and get this looking nice here and then we'll uh I think we'll go through and put this back in service. Everything you gotta do with tone, tone arm uh, wiring has to be twisted pairs because this is what you're gonna need for your hum reduction, right? If you don't have a twisted pair wire, it's gonna pick up hum and uh, outside interference. Okay, I got a couple hours work here and I'm just gonna give you an update of what I did. Um, I re reworked this end and I uh, Disconnected the wires from the clips. A lot of the solder in the cup of the clip wasn't attaching to the wire because the wire is coated with a varnish. And um, even though it was making a connection, it wasn't a good connection. So I re-soldered re all these four pins. And I dressed up the wires a little better, um, cleaned them up, and uh, pulled them back a bit and just made it tidy it up a bit so it looks a little neater and uh, cleaned it up uh, I use I'm using uh, lacquer as a uh, kind of like a bonding agent or something for these silk covered wires and what I'm doing is I'm using the lacquer on the outside of the wire and it keeps it from fraying and uh, kind of insulates it a bit so it makes it look a little better now on this end what I've done is I've uh, broken the splice apart, broken it out and cleaned it up. And um, a lot of these wires were unfraying. So again, I used the lacquer to, to clean that up. I'm gonna wrap those up again. But I think for the most part, I just trim this off too, cause I don't need it that long. For the most part, that's what I'm gonna go with. And I'm gonna use that length of wire 
to go into the base of the torn arm. And then I'm not going to be using this, I don't think, to splice that back on again. It was kind of ridiculous. What I have is I have other wires I can use and uh, they'll be a little easier to work with or thicker. And I'll make a splice underneath the deck of the turntable so you won't see it. So all you really see is the tone arm and the wire going down into the base. So uh, let's put this aside. I don't need that for now. Let's put this aside and let's uh, try getting this all back together again. Okay, so I reassembled the tone arm and I put it back and I'm feeding the wires down through the base here. And uh, as we can see, as we swing it, there's no binding and there doesn't appear to be any influence on the tone arm tracking from the wires themselves. They don't seem to be pulling on anything or influencing it. So I'm going to leave it at that. And I'm going to make the splice down below. I still have another inch or two of wire down hanging down below. And what I'll do is I'll splice it and uh, get it up to the, the output jacks. Okay, so here's my solution. The wires are coming down from above. These are the four wires here. And uh, these are the two wires going out to the, or four wires going out to the RCA jacks on the outside here. So what I did is I mounted a little uh, flex PCB board here it has four conductors on it and I'm going to use this as, a, as like a, a terminal, terminal strip. I'm just going to use the solder pads on this little flex connector here. And I'm just going to make the connections between the tone arm wires and the output wires. And I'm going to do this right down here underneath. Um, put this splice right here instead of splicing with um, heat shrink tubing and whatnot. I'm just going to do it on this board. And uh, if it comes down to it, I could actually shield this area with something if it, if it needs it. I don't think it will though. And we'll see how this works out. So I'm going to get busy soldering these wires up. I'm not going to do it on camera because it's really finicky. I'm going to trim the ends of these. They're all pretty frayed. I'm going to trim these, attach them, and then I'll attach these two. And then we'll go move on to testing. Okay, there it is. I got the wires connected. It wasn't easy. It's pretty tricky with my bad eyes and, you know, you a little bit of shake in the hands whatever but uh, that's exactly what I wanted to see here is like a little terminal strip I can connect everything together uh, the wires are exposed down below here um, just have to be careful that they don't get snagged on anything um, I wouldn't mind covering this with something but I might cut a well I don't know if I will or not I'll just leave it open and make sure it's known that you don't stick your hand under there when you're lifting it but uh, it's all connected the uh, we got it all connected up let's test it with an old meter for now just before we do anything else let's, let's test this with an old meter to find out uh, can you see that the glare is horrible here okay Just give me a minute to untangle my probes. Okay, so left channel. Let's see what we got here. It should have 1.1K. Pretty close. Okay, the right channel. Pretty good. Do we have ground continuity anywhere? Nope, everything's isolated from ground. Okay, that's good. Do we have ground shield? Yes, we do. 1.5, well, it's floating around. Yeah, we got shield. Okay, so everything's good, looks like. I just wanna check these for continuity. Uh, left signal. Good, right signal. Good. Right and left ground, left ground, right ground. Ground differential is zero. There shouldn't be there anything there. There's no ground between the two, so everything's good. Everything's wired properly. So now that we're done, let's get a belt on here and a platter 
and let's uh, listen to this thing, see how it sounds. Okay, this is a single speed motor and uh, I think you just have to pick the right pulley size for the speed you want. 33 and a third. I'm assuming it's a small one. Looks like it's working good. Okay, platter. Platter's quite heavy. I measured it at over five kilograms. Five or six kilograms. Yeah, it's it was quite a chunk of uh, solid mass. Let me go grab it. All right, so in case you're wondering what this was, this is a uh, record clamp. And there's a curl, a knurled knob on here that you can tighten and loosen. And then you've tightened, loosened this off. You can just pull this right up. And this is your record clamp, okay? And then that's where the record rests. There's a little cork mat here. I don't know if that's aftermarker or not, but have a look at this platter. It's a single chunk of die cast aluminum uh, and it's filled with lead. This thing's very heavy and very dense. It's got a lot of mass. So that equates to a stable rotational. Um, you know, you got your inertia when you're rotating. It wants to keep it stable. But uh, yeah, there it goes. Okay. Let's try this. There's a lot of mass there. It takes time to get up to speed. And once it does, it'll stay at speed. Okay, there's no indication here of how fast it's turning. So I'm going to have to get a strobe disc, I think. I don't assume, I don't, I'm not assuming there's anything wrong with the motor. I think the motor's working fine. We're at 33 and a third right now. So I'm just going to shut this off. And we'll get the rest of this mat. I think this goes on top. There we go. Got a cork mat. Okay, now basically what I want to do is I want to set up the tone arm for weight, tracking weight, and uh, I'll read through the instructions with regards to uh, any of the other settings. And then we'll get a LP on here and let's have a test. Okay, so it's working good. Um, it's a manual turntable, of course. I'm going to shut it down. There is still one problem. Let me uh, refocus here and I'll show you what it is. Okay, I don't understand how this is loose, but it is. If I show you here, this portion of the turntable is uh, this part's secure. The connection between the, this post and the casting is loose and I don't see any way to uh, tighten it I think it's just uh, I'll have to look at that more okay that's uh, gonna complete this one that's as far as I'm taking this uh, it was just a repair for the tone arm wires so I'm happy with this performance now it seems to be working really good Not much more to say about it I'm gonna put up a, a video a short video of a song and I'll directly port it to the camera and you guys can hear for yourself. But um, yeah, it's all working good now. And um, I'm sure the owner will be happy to get it back in working condition now. All right, that's it for this one. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, hope to see you on the next one. Take care.